Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 31st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, the DA has a great introduction into SC Debug. That's a debugger that allows you to analyze Windows shellcode. A couple interesting features that he's going over in his post today. For example, with SC Debug, you're able to redirect TCP connections and also file accesses. So this way, if you have malware that is trying to connect to an external server you can set up your own server and then via scdebug redirect the connection to your own server the is going through the entire process including how to extract the shell code from a powershell script and how to convert it into a form that's suitable for scdebug and then how to step through the code and use these features like redirecting tcp connections GitHub for a while now has offered a security feature that alerts GitHub repositories if any dependencies that the repository is using have been affected by security vulnerabilities. This has been available for a selected number of languages. I believe Ruby, Python, and JavaScript are included at this point. Now, GitHub is expanding this feature at this point in beta with automatic security patches. Now the way this will work is that if you opt in for this feature, which of course requires that you are already using the dependency craft to figure out uh, what other projects your project depends on, then GitHub will automatically create a pull request whenever there is a security update for anything that you would depend on. So it's not automated in the way that it will automatically apply these patches. You still have to apply the pull request. That's of course also the safe way of doing it because uh, these changes could of course uh, cause problems for some projects. In order to minimize the risks, uh, these pull requests will focus on the security fix. So they will not necessarily update you to the latest, greatest version of this particular dependency. Instead, they will upgrade you to the latest secure version of the library that you depend on. And a number of different researchers have reported about a new botnet that is yet again targeting exposed Docker containers. Now, yesterday I talked about the Docker vulnerability. This is actually not related to this vulnerability. Instead, uh, these bots are just taking advantage of exposed Docker APIs with no or weak credentials. Now, the main exploit payload here is actually not an exciting it's just yet another XM Rick Monero miner. What's sort of a little bit interesting about this latest campaign is how they find more victims. Most bots will just randomly scan IP addresses, sometimes focusing on certain ranges like cloud providers or such, where they're hoping to be a bit more successful. In this case, however, the approach is more targeted. The attacker here is using Shodan in order to find exposed Docker hosts and then is scanning them for exposed APIs. A simple trick to protect yourself is not to expose these Docker APIs. A simple security check and scan should take care of that. And of course, can't hurt to look up your own environment using Shodan, but that's typically only possible with a paid subscription. Shodan, of course, by now has disabled the accounts being used uh, by these bots. Uh, but of course, there's really nothing that prevents uh, these bot owners from just setting up yet another account. Also, the related Docker images were removed from repository. But again, that just takes uploading yet another one in order to start all over again. And I think it was a couple of months ago that I talked about web packaging, an emerging standard uh, proposed by Google and others in order to allow entire web applications to be packaged and served offline or 
being distributed. The idea here is that you take the web application, you create a digitally signed package, and then this package could be offered, for example, by content delivery networks or even in an offline fashion without having to actually download it from the original website. Now, while this sounds uh, like a great idea, Mozilla now has voiced some objections to it. And uh, many of these objections are centering around the idea of origin substitution. The problem here is same origin policy. If you are downloading JavaScript from a particular website, this JavaScript is able to send requests to the website you downloaded it from with little restrictions. If this JavaScript now tries to send requests to another website, another origin, then certain restrictions are applied in order to prevent attacks. Well, the problem with uh, this web packaging is that essentially the origin, the original origin the package was served from is preserved. So it is now possible for anybody to offer content that logically appears to have been downloaded from a different source. Well, and that's it for today. And remember, Tuesday, there will be the webcast about new authentication technologies. There's a link on the ISC homepage to it if you would like to pre-register. Other than that, uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.